In the restoration process uh, for tube radios, one of the most important steps for me is to check the power supply first before powering on the radio. And to determine whether the power supply is working properly, one has to be very careful uh, by looking for shorts, looking for anything that will cause some dramatic uh, upheaval when you switch this thing on. Now you could simply power it up, the chances are it'll work, you can probably measure some voltages on the output and on the uh, B plus section of the radio, but what I like to do first is to do a power off a test of various components and various parts of the circuit starting with the power supply and therefore starting with the power transformer. Now this is actually a lot simpler than it looks or that it might than it may seem because what you're really doing is checking wiring and if you have the schematic and even if you don't have the schematic it's simply a matter of going from the first stage of the power supply which is the plug and following the wiring through and checking that it's connected to where it's supposed to be connected and especially checking that it's not touching or connected to where it's not supposed to be connected. Now you have to remember this stage is very important because you're working with mains voltages. Now where I live in Europe we're on 230, 235 volts. Um, either way these things can go bang. So I'm going to go through the process of how I test the power transformer before putting this thing anywhere near the mains outlet. So where you do have a schematic, things become a lot easier. Because what you can do now is follow the mains where it comes in, which will be the plug. Here's your plug. This is a rather ugly looking one. But this is a two-pin plug. It's uh, not polarized. We don't use polarized here. It's got your the two connections for mains and it's got a earth connection as well, ground. Now if you follow this on the schematic, you see that your mains comes in here and it's supposed to meet a switch. Okay, Now that switch will be on the front of your radio usually and that switch then allows the power to go through to a fuse into the primary of the transformer on this end on the other side of the switch, this happens to have a, a dual switch, so when you switch off or on your mains, you're actually connecting and disconnecting both of those uh, lines, the neutral and the live, whichever one it may be. Let's call that live and that one neutral for now. Your mains comes in through a switch, through a fuse on this in this case, and then into your primary of the transformer on this end. And on that end, there's various there are various tappings for the uh, the mains voltage. Here we have a 220, 155, 127 and 110. This can vary from radio to radio but they're fairly general, fairly similar. So the first thing to do is put it on the main selector that you uh, are working with uh, in your country. In my case the highest that I've got is 220. I would have preferred if there was another one here for 240 which sometimes you do find but I don't have it so it's on 220. And now what I need to do is to check whether this circuit is working. Okay, so the easiest way to do this, really, what can be wrong here? You could have any of these wires coming in from your plug. It could be broken somewhere. So you can test to the individual switch and so on, but there's an easier way of doing it. And that is, you assume that everything is fine first and do the easiest test first. So what is the easiest test? The easiest test is if you measure continuity from here through there, through the switch, with the switch powered on, through the fuse, assuming it's not blown, through the primary of the transformer, assuming it's not open, out the other end, through this switching system, assuming there's nothing dead there, back out through the switch, which is closed, and you should have continuity between this point and this point on your plug. Okay? So that's the first thing to do. Don't assume the worst, assume the best. Okay? Now, the way you do this is you have to make sure that there's a fuse in there and make sure that there's a selection made and make sure that your, your switch is on. So let's check that. So in our case, we have our plug. 
which seems to be fine. The plug is going into the radio somewhere. We check that our selection is made. In this case, it's selected for 220. We check that we have a fuse, and yes, there's a fuse in the fuse holder. Sometimes these holders are not as visible as this one, but in this case it is. We can see that the fuse seems to be okay. We, we can actually see the wire, the fuse wire going across there. So let's assume it's fine. Now we need to do something else. We need to close that switch. So again, closing the switch, no big deal. If you push any of these, whether it be long wave, medium wave, short wave or FM, you're going to close that switch because this is the opposite. This is the OS, the OFF button. Okay, so there's no power on. I'm just pushing, say, medium wave just to test it. I set my multimeter to ohms and I measure across the two prongs of the plug. And it's dirty, so Make sure you get a good connection. I get about 49 ohms. I get 49 to 50 ohms. What does this tell me? This tells me that the circuit here is actually there. Because I close the switch and my fuse is fine. I've tested that circuit. That primary is working fine. Now here's another question. If you have a selector and you don't know which one is which, you don't know, let's say for argument's sake that these markings are not as clear as they are on here. I can read them quite well. How do I know which one is the lowest, in other words, the 110 volts, and which one is the highest, in other words, the 220? Now, it's important for me here because if you make a mistake in the states, the worst case you're going to have is you're going to put 120 volts into a 110 volt input. You'll have a slightly higher output voltage over here, but nothing too dramatic. However, if I make a mistake in Europe, I'm going to get double the voltage here and something really badly is going to happen. Something's going to go wrong. Okay, so how do I determine which is which? Well, you can actually get a clue from the circuit itself. This is one end of the primary. That's the top end of the primary, and we've measured 50 ohms on the 220 winding. Okay, so the thing to do is simply to measure the other values of resistance and see what you get. In other words, measure from this point here to that one, to that one, to that one, to the other three that you don't know in this case, and see what kind of resistances we get. Let me show you. The best place to do that is actually at the terminal block, the selector block at the back. So the way to do this is connect your multimeter to the neutral end of your plug and hold that there. And we measure to the one we've chosen here and we get 48, 49 ohms, which is the same as that 50 that I made a note of there. The accuracy, absolute accuracy is not that important. Okay, now we measure the other points. Let's try this one. Is reading 34. That one there, which I know here is 155 volts. This one here is say 30. And the last one is 28. If you had to now guess which voltages these points are, you know in this particular case, we've got about 50 ohms, 30 something. In other words, it goes down that way, which means that that is the lowest resistance over there. That will be the one for the lowest voltage, 110 volts. This will be next. This one says 127, that says 155, and that's our 220. That's the one we're using. So now you've established that you have the primary working. To establish whether you have the secondary working, it's simply a matter of measuring between the two AC inputs to the selenium rectifier. So what you're going to measure is to see if you have continuity or resistance from there to there. Okay, that'll tell you that winding's working. The other thing to do is to measure from there to the output of the uh, heater um, coil. However, this one is a little bit more complicated because
This is a very low resistance. It's high current, low voltage, low resistance. Um, and you probably will have at least your light bulbs in circuit, which are also a low resistance, DC resistance. If you remove your, your uh, tubes, at least you don't have their heaters in parallel as well. Because what you've really got, if you have all the tubes in place and all the light bulbs in place, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight very low resistors in parallel with your output of that transformer. So that's not a very good way of measuring, just measuring continuity. You will always really get continuity. And bear in mind that if you measure from there to there, you could still get a false continuity because you might have a short somewhere. You could have a short between both of those through the chassis, for example, which is a fault situation, but that's a start. So the first thing to do is measure across the to the output of the, um, the secondary of the uh, power transformer and see if you get continuity. Let's have a look. And here we've got the selenium rectifier and I can very clearly see AC, AC. I know from my schematic that these are the two inputs to the selenium rectifier. So they are the two secondary, the outputs from the secondary of the transformer. So if I measure across that, 120 ohms, it seems fine. I'm not absolutely certain, but it seems fine. So how do I test the heater winding? Well, you can actually remove all the tubes and disconnect the light bulbs. You will still be left with a very low resistance winding, which uh, is going to be a very low ohmic resistance, DC resistance, and it could actually give you a false uh, sense of security because you may think it's there and it may not be there, or it may be a short to ground on both sides. Bear in mind, when you measure the, across the chassis here, you probably get a few ohms because these chassis have got a bit of grime, a bit of rust, a bit of dirt, so they could measure a few ohms, and that's really what you're going to measure, if not milliohms. Um, across the, 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 the winding, the secondary winding. So I have a different way of doing this, which I prefer to try out. And let me set it up and show you. I set my signal generator to produce a sine wave, 50 hertz sine wave, amplitude 1 volt RMS. So what I'm doing is I'm simulating the mains at a very low voltage. I connect that to my plug, my power plug. So it's as if I've connected this to the wall, and in this case, my wall unit or my socket is giving me one volt RMS. Now, if I set my multimeter to AC volts and I measure the output of the, the secondary of that transformer, in other words, the two AC points over here, and I switch on the output of the signal generator, I get 1.092 volts. If I measure across my light bulb, I get 0.03 volts. So I'm actually getting this some reading on here. Now, if I up the voltage on my power supply, just to make sure this is not a, a spurious noise signal, I'll change that to 2 volts RMS, and this is doubled, 3 volts RMS, that's trebled, okay? Let's go back to 1. Let's go back to this, let's put this on here, measuring 1.094, if I change my signal generator voltage to 2 volts, I get 2.188, 3 volts. So again, this is proof that my output is working. So what I've done is I've tested the circuits uh, after the secondary or up to the selenium rectifier. I've tested it with a very low safe voltage. Now bear in mind, this does not guarantee that my transformer is not going to spark over when I put high voltage on it. But at least it tells me that there, there are no shorts, obvious shorts, and my circuit seems to be complete. So what I've established is that this part of the circuit, the secondary, up to the selenium rectifier, seems to be fine. 
I've also established, at least to the one light bulb where I've tested, that this winding seems to be fine. Okay? So I have tested my power transformer. Everything tells me that there is a very high probability that it is fine. So I can move on to the next stage, which is to actually test the connections to all the tubes and then test the actual output of the selenium rectifier. And I'll do that on the next building block when I talk about the filter capacitors and how to reform them. Right, I hope this is useful. See you back soon.